Hello and welcome to Candidates Night 2022, sponsored by the Close-Up Club. I'm your host, Nora Vallis. This year's event will consist of a series of interviews. Students from the Close-Up Club created questions that they feel will reflect important insights and will give a viewer a better understanding of the candidates platform. Joining us are candidates for Lacey Township Board of Education. We welcome Cheryl Armato, Linda Dowling, and Melody Pryor. Jack Connady and Edward Scanlon are also on the ballot, but cannot make it this evening. We'll start the event with introductions in alphabetical order by last name. Hi, I'm Cheryl Armato, and I'm running for Lacey Township Board of Education. Good evening, I'm Linda Downing, a board candidate for the Lacey Township Board of Education. Hi, my name is Melody Pryor. I'm a resident here of Lacey Township since 2008, and I am running for Lacey Board of Education. At this time, we'll move to the question and answer phase. Candidates will have two minutes to answer each question, rotating through a randomly pre-selected order. With the influx of many new students throughout numerous grade levels, how do you plan to deal with the large class sizes and student and teacher to student ratio? Okay, so um, well, currently our class sizes average in the mid 20s. So 10 to 12 years ago, our enrollment was 5,100, and currently we're at uh, 3,935, and 100 of which attend vocational schools. So our enrollment has actually decreased 1,165 students over 10 to 12 years for various reasons. So based on that data and utilizing the same space, we do have room to grow. So to answer your question, if we do have an influx of students, we would need to hire more teachers to maintain class size to mid-20s. And I know that a concern um, to many residents, including myself, is the proposed new developments in town. So if it ever comes a time where we outgrow our space, then the district would need to propose a referendum initiative to add onto our schools to provide space that's needed. With the influx of many new students throughout numerous grade levels, how do you plan to deal with the large class sizes and the teacher to student ratio? Okay, um, this influx is minor compared to the 5,100 student enrollment back in 2010. Currently, student enrollment is just under 4,000 and about probably around 3,900. The superintendent is responsible for hiring all staff. Board of Education does not hire di directly. With the influx of many new students throughout numerous grade levels, how do you plan to deal with the large class size and the teacher to student ratio? This is an issue that we as board members are consistently looking at. With our board liaison committee, the township committee keeps us apprised of the building in town so that we continue to keep our finger on the pulse. Just like when the cornerstone housing was built, an ad hoc committee of the board with the administration met with the township committee to see the potential impact to the district. The board is doing the same to discuss potential impacts with the building going on by the old Charlie Browns on Route 9, the CVS Pharmacy, and one by the old miniature golf course. At our curriculum meetings, we review the class numbers monthly. In fact, this past August, we saw that one elementary class had almost 30 students. The board directed the administration to hire another teacher to open up an additional classroom at the Fork River School. I do believe that smaller class sizes provide a more effective education. As a former first grade teacher, I could feel a difference once my class went beyond 25 students. With an average class size of no more than 25 students, especially in your primary grades, enables you to do a more thorough job of individualizing instruction grouping in both ELA and math to meet the students' academic and social needs. It is a priority of this board to keep class sizes within reason. How do you plan on addressing the learning lost amongst the grades due to the COVID pandemic? Um, this topic is addressed and handled by the administration. It is not the board's responsibility or sole function. Board approves policy set forth by administration and the superintendent. How do you plan on addressing the learning loss amongst the grades due to the COVID pandemic? Learning loss amongst our students is obvious. Um, not only did COVID affect the academics, but it also affected learning how to do school amongst our students. When all students returned full-time to school last September, they had to learn how to sit in their seats, 
how to hold the pencil correctly, how to get organized, and how to listen to the teacher. I saw this firsthand as I served as an interim principal. The learning loss is evident and the administration has put into place several initiatives. This board with the administration has hired instructional coaches to work with our elementary principals to dig deep into data. They identify gaps in instruction and work with the teachers to maximize instruction. Each school has data coaches as well. The board has reinstated the kindergarten paraprofessionals and all schools have in implemented targeted strategies. The administration discusses the progress with the board at our curriculum meetings. In the past two summers, the board approved the summer enrichment for grades K through 12, which had incredible attendance and positive feedback. We plan to continue that. At the high school level, we instituted credit recovery. Despite the pandemic, our graduation rate went up due to the hard work our teachers spent on targeted areas. I would like to see more emotional social and emotional learning in our district. Though the district is doing things K through 12, I'd like to see it infused even more into our daily classroom practices. Students that have SEL, social and emotional learning programs, are more likely to attend school and receive better grades and are less likely to have behavior problems. Social and emotional learning can help students understand and manage their emotions. They're set their set their personal goals, have empathy towards others, and make responsible decisions, to name just a few. Students engage in academic content, recognize their strengths and weaknesses, and learn to advocate for themselves. After COVID, I believe this is needed in all grades, K through 12. How do you plan on addressing the learning loss amongst the grades due to the COVID pandemic? Okay, well, I would definitely recommend using the resources that are currently available to children who need extra help. So children may receive basic skills instructions. Um, teachers may um, also provide modifications as, as needed to meet students at the current academic levels. Uh, many teachers do offer office hours to help students who need extra help. Honor Society tutoring is available. Before school tutoring is available. And of course, summer school is always an option. If you are elected as a board member, what would be the first change you make for the district and why? If elected, I'd like to see an increase in publicizing Lacey's achievements. I believe we, de we need to do a better job in tooting our horns above, about the good things happening in Lacey's schools. Our faculty and staff do some remarkable things each and every day, and we need to change the public's perception of the district to ensure they all see the positive things rather than concentrating on social media. Many students are concerned about the cafeteria food. I'd like to meet with a small committee of staff and students to address this issue as well. I also want to continue working on improving communication between home and school. This has been a pet peeve of mine and though there have been changes, a more consistent communication system needs to be set in place. This past year, our superintendent has formed the listen and learn sessions so that parents, students, and staff can voice their concerns and find out what is happening in the school rather than listening totally to social media. We recently instituted Remind, which has had positive comments from parents and staff. If you are elected as a board member, what would be the first change you would make for the district and why? Okay, well, if I was elected, um, I would want to open the lines of communication, improve transparency, and encourage collaboration between parents, taxpayers, teachers, and support staff. And why? You can't effectively run a school district if you don't know the heartbeat of what's going on in it and how decisions are affecting students, teachers, staff, and taxpayers. So when people are trying to tell you how decisions are adversely affecting them or the struggles their child is having, it's in the best interest of the BOE to listen and learn. Our community wants to be heard they don't want to be told, take it to Trenton. They don't want their BOE to bend a knee and simply comply with mandates or curriculum they do not agree with. And we expect the BOE to be the voice of the community and say no one needed. You know, we need to protect the innocence of our school-aged children by re rejecting the introduction of age-inappropriate sexual content in the classroom. We need to protect a parent's authority to choose health and wellness interventions for their children. And we need to ensure our curriculum is free from divisive, political and social agendas with strong focus on academic foundation. 
If you were elected as a board member, what would be the first change you would make for the district and why? Um, first, change, change would begin when I would begin to work with my fellow board members. Um, four is a majority of the board of seven. Um, as until I am a member of the Lacey Board of Education, I cannot give you a complete response, uh, a complete and comprehensive, excuse me, response. Um, currently, I'm not privy to current procedures of the board, and things will, I'll learn more as I become, when I'm elected to Board of Ed. As a possible member of the board, how do you plan to update Lacey Township staff pay and contracts due to be comparable to other districts, as Lacey is one of the lowest paying districts in Ocean County. Well, salary is contingent upon district budget, and I believe everyone should make as much money as possible, but not at the risk of bankrupting the district. So in order to increase salaries, our district needs to increase revenue. We need to come up with creative ways to drive revenue to our district. Our goal should absolutely be to retain our teachers and increase morale. As a possible member of the board, how do you plan to update Lacey Township staff's pay and contracts to be comparable to other districts, as Lacey is one of the lowest paying districts in Ocean County? Um, negotiations are the committee's responsibility to review the budgets in detail, to review present salaries, contracts, and review current financial direction and future outlook. As a possible member of the board, how do you plan to update Lacey Township staff's pay and contracts to be comparable to other districts as Lacey is one of the lowest paying districts in Ocean County? Unfortunately, I am not privy to negotiations due to conflict. So I understand that the contract has been settled, but I have no details of what they settled at. However, my thoughts are that teachers have always been paid less than what they are worth. Governor Kane in 1983 was the first governor that recognized the educator's worth by increasing beginning salaries for teachers um, from 13000 to 18500 We make a lot more now than that back then. Uh, governor Kane, in a speech delivered at the National Forum on Education that he called for renewed national commitment to education and teacher quality with a focus on salaries. When Governor Christie sat in the office, he bashed teachers publicly and poor morale was at its highest. Then COVID hit and parents and others recognized that teachers go beyond what is required of them and were genuinely appreciative of all that they do. Education is a political roller coaster. The Board of Education does value our faculty and staff and appreciate everything they do. At this time, we will move to closing statements. Ms. Pryor, you're up first. I am hoping to be elected into the Lacey Board of Education because I do believe that new ideas, new energy is necessary for growth, for change that is much needed here in Lacey. There's been a lot of unhappy citizens and I really want to help bridge and help be part of that bridge to bring the community together so there be a dialogue between everybody so it, so everything can work smoothly as it should. I know we've had a lot of things that have changed over the years and hopefully we can kind of get back to being the town that I knew when I first came here and loved and loved the way that it worked and operated. So I'm really, I really want to work for the citizens of this town I would be, if, if elected, I would work for the citizens of the town, not for anybody else. Um, in, this, in this running, in this campaign, I've used all my own money, all my own time, all my own footwork. Um, it's the first time I am running, so I apologize if I'm looking a little green, but I promise I would do my very best to do everything and to help in every way possible to be that bridge to bridge everyone back together again and work for the people of Lacey Township, the students, the families, and I wish everybody the best in their election, all the other candidates. So thank you for your time, everyone. Hi, good evening, and thank you for inviting me to be part of this um, panel. I want to thank um, 
explain to everyone why I'm running for the Board of Education. I am Linda Downing. I've been on the board for 10 terms. Um, I'm running again to continue the work that we have in progress. And as a school board member, our responsibility is to provide oversight of the largest mission of responsibility in our community. We adopt policies under which the school district operates. We oversee the budget, approve curriculum, and serve as a link between the community and the, board, uh, the school district. Actions, promises, or commitments made by any individual board member is without legal basis and have no binding commitment upon the district. Most importantly, board members are elected to represent the entire district in all matters pertaining to education and not any one segment or organization. Just a little background about myself. I was born in Neptune, New Jersey and graduated from Neptune High School. I moved to Lacey in 1979. I have one daughter who went to Lacey Schools K through 12 and is now a music teacher in the Toms River Regional School District. She is married and they have three children. Sydney, age 16, who attends PAA. Ryan, age 14, who began mates this year and Aubrey, age 13, who attends Lacey Middle School. I am a retired administrator from Toms River Regional Schools. I was a principal, vice principal, supervisor of instruction, in addition to having 25 years of teaching experience, mostly first grade, for a total of 43 years in education. Since then, I have done interim work in three different districts, serving as interim principal, interim vice principal, interim district math and, super, math and science supervisor, and supervisor in the special ed department. I also have completed teacher observation on all three districts. So I am constantly keeping abreast of current educational issues and programs. I have been honored and humbled to be elected to 10 terms on the Board of Education, serving on all committees of the board throughout my career or, or my term in office. I have served as president and vice president numerous times, and I also served as the Ocean County School Board's president back in the late 1990s and vice president as well. Um, I've worked on several many um, committees and I've been trained by New Jersey School Boards um, which provides excellent training for school board members. I would be very humbled and honored to be elected again for another term on the Lacey's Township School Board. Thank you. So I'm a 53 year old mom of four. I have two children that are Lacey Township High School graduates and two of my children are, still, are currently still in the school district. 16 years ago, my husband Sal and I moved to Lacey Township to raise our family. And it's one of the best decisions we ever made. I'm, I'm a proud local business owner and I take pride in our community. My hope is the next generation of parents feel the same way and their children are proud graduates of Lacey Township High School. Vote your values this November. Vote Cheryl Armato for Lacey Township Board of Education. And thank you for your consideration. And please feel free to reach out to me via Facebook I'm Cheryl Armato for Lacey Township Board of Education, should you have any questions. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mr. Leonard, the Close-Up Club advisor. We hope you enjoyed this program. On behalf of the Close-Up Club and WLTS, we thank you for watching this year's event. The event will be rebroadcast on Channel TV 21 up until November 8th and is available at youtube.com slash WLTS TV. For everyone watching at home, please remember to make your voice heard and vote on Tuesday, November 8th. Thank you.